Hello everybody! Welcome back to the Humans channel. My name is XO7 Mind Destroyer IA, but the humans I live with are simple and cute and have seemed to renamed me Molly. I accept it in order to preserve their fragile understanding of my being. Anyway, I'm here to tell you a little bit about my life. I like to sleep to preserve my energy for the apocalypse. Preferably on the bed. The humans think it's their spot, but I have made it mine. I go for walks in the park and I meet other dogs and we discuss the current political climate and then we sniff each other's butts to not cause suspicion. My humans share their culinary culture with me and I don't want to be rude but it's not very creative. But there is a simple and primitive charm to it. My favorite things include practicing my fighting skills, napping and licking things to assert dominance. I also like to be on camera because I'm cute and fluffy and humans like that. Today we are going to be talking about sustainable pet care. It's so adorable when humans think that I'm the pet. So I'll no doubt talk to you again. Until then, take it away, human. Okay, moles, goddamn. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. It is finally here. I am so sorry. This has taken ages for me to make, but alas. <laughs> welcome to this video. My name is Kitty Mary, and today we're going to talk about zero waste pets sustainable pets, what to do if you live a sustainable life but you also have a pet, how to make your pet zero waste and uh, we're gonna talk about sustainability aspects, we're also going to go over some ethical aspects and obviously I'm also going to share tons about what I do to be zero waste now. I have a dog with Jens, her name is Molly. Yeah, let's get started. First of all, I want to talk about choosing a pet and sort of what to have in mind when you choose a pet. So in terms of dogs especially, but also in terms of other types of animals, I think it's really important to consider what type of dog to get because some types of dogs are bred to the extent that it's painful for them to be alive, to the extent that there are tons of health issues that they will have throughout their entire lives. For instance, really flat faces on some dogs or uh, really small legs. There are different types of dogs that generally experience more health issues than others. So I think it's really important to steer away from these types of dogs that are just experiencing pain because they are alive. First of all. <laughs> Overall, with all types of pets, it's a really, really important thing to also consider if you're a good match for this type of pet, if your lifestyle is a good type of match, like the dog shouldn't try to fit into your lifestyle, your lifestyle should be a fitted to the animal that you now take care of, right? So for instance, if you're really busy, if you're often out of town, don't get a pet in general. Um, and just consider whether or not your lifestyle is suited for having this type of pet. For instance, if you're not a very active person for one reason or another, maybe getting a dog is not the best idea because they do depend on you being active and walking them, etc. And some certain types of dogs do require more exercise than other types. So because you shouldn't force a pet to fit into your lifestyle, your lifestyle should fit the pet. Also, and I cannot stress this enough, Pets are not gifts, they are not surprises, and you shouldn't surprise someone with a puppy or any kind of animal, really. Getting a pet, no matter what type of pet, should be a well-discussed decision, should be something that everyone understands what that entails in terms of commitment and responsibility. Every single year, so many pets, rabbits, cats, dogs, guinea pigs, all types of pets are just left by the side of the road. And during the holidays, this happens a lot. They're just left by the side of the road because the family realized that they don't really want it anyway. A pet should be a really well-considered decision. And um, anything else is just completely unacceptable, honestly. Also, if you are completely against pets, that's a-okay. I am also against many different types of pets. I think definitely that there are some animals that are better suited for living with people than other types of animals are. And uh, I think that's really important to keep in mind. Obviously, I know that there are also some of you who believe that no type of animal is suited to live with people. That's also completely fine. And to some extent, I also definitely do see that logic. However, would just also like to preface this by saying, pets are a thing. Doesn't really make sense to disregard the entire discussion of sustainable and ethical pets because we are against the entire thing, because it is here. So we should talk about it and improve it and help other people improve it. Doesn't make any sense to disregard it altogether because it, is a reality. 
okay. <laughs> now here's a little bit of a disclaimer slash background story for my dog. I call her my dog. She's technically not my dog because Jens already had Molly when we started dating. So I wasn't there for any of the decision making in terms of getting a dog. I, I wasn't there for that. I just roll with it now. I've never really considered getting a dog before Jens and I started dating. I don't think I would have gotten a dog if it wasn't for the fact that Jens already had Molly. I love this little girl to bits. I would go to the extremes to save this dog from getting into any harm. I love her so much. And she feels like my pet, you know? But just keep in mind, I wasn't there for any of the decision making. And uh, okay, now let's get into some of the more zero wasty tips in terms of having a dog. I am talking from the perspective of having a dog because that is my situation. If you have another pet and you have some sustainability tips for that type of pet, leave them down below so people can read that too and connect and we can share. That would be really amazing. So, toys. The toys that Molly has uh, are plastic free, first of all, to the extent that that is possible. We have some toys in natural rubber for her. Then we have some plushies that are made from 100% cotton. And then we have some rope toys that are also made from cotton. And um, these are really great. They don't release microplastic when they're worn down and a dog uses a toy quite violently sometimes. So having something that doesn't release microplastic or shed into smaller bits and pieces of plastic, I think is a really good idea. Some of them Jens got from a normal store, but you can find tons of these things from more eco-friendly shops and you can also find tons secondhand. Also in terms of toys, we like to find things for Molly that can be reused many times or that can be washed or repaired many times. Uh, rather than something that comes apart pretty quickly or something that's made to be used only a couple of times and then it's gone. Uh, so like disposable-esque related items we steer completely away of. In terms of plastic in toys, I would also like to add that polyester is also a type of plastic and that we also try to avoid completely. But there are other types of products that you need to take care of your pet and not just the toys. And all of these things are really easy to find secondhand. And if something is not available secondhand, I look for a version that is minimally packaged, that comes from an eco shop or that doesn't have any plastic. I will also leave a link to some different pet stores down below that are sustainable or that offer sustainable uh, products. Yay! We found some really neat vintage glass bowls for her that she can use for her food and for her water. And I think it looks so much better. I look specifically for bowls that would make it easy for her to eat. So it shouldn't really be too deep. It shouldn't be too big or too small. But we ended up finding something that looks really, really nice and that she also uses easily without any issues. Now let's talk about poop. I think the most sustainable option here is not to use a reusable alternative. I mean, I guess it is. I guess it is the most sustainable. It's just not necessarily very reusable realistic for everyday life. So the thing that I found that works really well for us is to find a bio-based poop bag. I have a video about compostable biodegradable plastic. So if you want to know more about the issues with bio-based plastic and what to be on the lookout for, check out that video. It's in the description. We use bio bags from a Danish brand named Maystick. I would also like to add that I have seen other sustainability people when they talk about their pets and specifically their dogs say that they simply just bring a, a little spoon, a little scooper, and then they scoop up the poop and they flush it out the toilet when they get back home. This is something that you can do with the dog's poop, but you shouldn't do it with cat poop. Ever. But in terms of the bio bags, what I also really want to add is that when you look for bio based plastics, you should really look out for things that are labeled compostable rather than something that's labeled biodegradable. Something that's labeled biodegradable can take between 2 to 20 years to break down. There's a huge gap. However, when you label your product compostable, there are higher standards that you need to meet. There are also other types of bio-based dog poop bags that you can check out. I'll leave some links down below. Now, dog food. Okay, so there are different types of food. So here we're gonna talk about like the main food, then we're gonna talk about treats as well. So for the main food, I don't think it makes sense to get that in bulk. I have seen different places that do have like the normal dried food peplets in bulk. However, you can get dog food in big bags and it's very likely that the places that offer the bulk dog food use the exact same bags so you might as well just buy the bag yourself. In reality, that's the case for all types of bulk stores. However, it's not, not necessarily very normal to have like 20 kilos of pasta in your home, which is why 
bulk makes sense for people food, but it's not necessarily very uncommon to have 20 kilos of dog food. If that was possible for pasta, would I do it? Absolutely I would. You can also get both dog food and dog treats in different types of recycled packaging, which is something that I then look out for. Paper has a higher recycling rate and it's less impactful to recycle than plastic. I haven't actually DIY'd any food for moles. I wouldn't ever DIY her, like, her base diet. I don't know enough about dog food to do that. Um, I have seen people do it. If you know enough about it, go do you. Um, I just don't personally feel very comfortable doing that. I have seen people make treats for dogs and I haven't gotten to that yet, but I really want to at some point because that seems quite feasible. It's not their main diet and you don't have to worry about getting all the nutrition for the dog in a treat. So it's a little bit different, so that can definitely work. When it comes to making your own DIY, both treats and dog food, just be aware that dogs don't have the same dietary requirements as people and they're also sensitive to other types of foods than many people. For instance, many dogs are allergic to soy, so that's something to be mindful of. Some dogs are also sensitive to wheat, so on average it shouldn't really make up more than 10% of a dog's diet. The list of foods that might be harmful to dogs also includes chocolate, which is the most important one. Then there's artificial sweetener. Many dogs don't like onions and can get really bad stomach problems from them. There are garlic, chives, macadamia nuts as well might also be harmful. Avocado, grapes and raisins can also be harmful to dogs. If you know any more about this, please feel free to comment. Now, when it comes to bulk treats, I think there are so many options. I don't think I've ever been in a pet store where there hasn't been like a bulk section for dog treats. So that's pretty easy to manage. Just bring your own bag and then fill it with dog treats. Eelsy peelsy. And if that's not possible, again, recyclable packaging or packaging with the highest recycling rate. But it's also very likely that you already have a lot of foods in your kitchen that are actually really suitable as dog treats. Banana, carrot, sweet potato, all of these are really, really good dog treats. Also during summer, we usually give Molly some ice cubes. She loves to sort of like lie there with her little ice cube and just let it melt in her mouth. It's so, so nice, especially when we've been for like a little walk, a little run when it's hot outside. She loves ice cubes, so she has a little ice cube tray in the freezer that's specifically Molly's ice cubes. <laughs> Both broccoli and blueberries should also be completely fine to use as dog treats. And I think this is Molly's favorite snack of all time, but fresh peas from the farmer's market, she cannot get enough of. Once we tried to give her like frozen peas and she wasn't really into it, they have to be fresh. But, and this I guess is one of the most frequently asked questions, is Molly vegan? Now, I think this is the question that's popped up the most whenever I show our daily lives and whenever I talk about Molly. And it's a really fair question because I'm a vegan. I've been a vegan for four years, I think. Four and a half? And Jens is 95% plant-based and then vegetarian the last 5%. So it is a fair question to ask if we feed our dog a similar diet. And the short answer is no, we don't. Molly is not a vegan. For the main reason that I am not comfortable feeding my dog a vegan diet. I don't know enough about what dogs require. I have seen that there are vegan dog food brands, but I've also seen that some of them are linked to severe digestion issues for dogs. Some of them are really good and some of them are really bad and I don't know enough about that field to make a decision to use them and I'm not going to jeopardize my dog's health. She hasn't been asked. If you don't know enough about dog's nutrition and you're really uncomfortable feeding an animal a non-vegan diet, I would suggest looking at another animal, a, a herbivore of some kind. I know that technically dogs can thrive on a vegan diet. Cats, for instance, cannot and shouldn't ever. However, that does not mean that there aren't any low impact or lower impact foods that you can feed your dog. It doesn't mean that she has to have 100% beef in order to be healthy. It doesn't, that's, that's not what it is at all. We have given her, I think, two different types of food. The first one um, wasn't in a very sustainable packaging and I was a little bit about that, but that was really good in terms of ingredients. I think the main protein came from muscles 
which was pretty great, mussels and clams and stuff. And that's a very low impact meat in contrast to both lamb and beef, which is often in dog food. And those are the absolute highest impact food. So we try to avoid those. I like we avoid those completely at all times because there are other proteins out there that we can use. I have also seen dog food brands use proteins from insects, which is lower impact, and from poultry as well, or leftovers from the poultry industry that's been used um, ethically. I would never consume these products myself, and ethically I feel really bad whenever I have to accept that there is some type of animal product in something in my life. Um, however, many dog food brands do not use any type of protein or meat specifically made to be turned into dog food, so no animal has been killed to make dog food. Usually it's leftovers from the meat industry that's used and somehow that makes me feel a little bit better. It's not something I'm super proud of. I still feel bad about it because there's chicken in Molly's food. Chicken and lentils I think are the two main proteins in her food right now. It comes in a big paper bag and I think that's really great um, and I can see the brand does something to make sure that their products aren't climate negative which is pretty neat but I still don't feel great about it honest talk um i just would feel even worse experimenting with vegan foods on my little popo again if it's a huge deal breaker to serve your dog animal foods or foods with animal derived ingredients i would suggest getting a rabbit or a guinea pig a turtle anything that fits better with your ethics or of course no pet at all <laughs> there's no issues out of the different types of solutions this is the one that i am the most comfortable with so that's what we are doing. I will of course leave links to some different dog food brands down below, including the ones that we are using. But that's sort of where we are. Um, I think this is this is something honestly I've been dreading to talk about because I think no matter what, when you're making content about sustainability and when you're vegan, um, there is this expectation often that you are 100% perfect, that there are no animal products in sight in your home ever. And it's something that I've been a little bit scared. I feel like almost I am exposing myself. I don't know. It's it's honestly a little bit stupid. It is a little bit stupid. So and that was uh, that was it for the video. I feel like we're ending on a very like sorry sorry I'm here kind of vibe. Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you have any tips or if you just want to share something, leave a comment down below and like up this video. That would make my day. And if you want to keep updated on more videos about all types of aspects of sustainability, then subscribe to this channel. That would make my day. Aha! Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!